Algebra 1, 6.8b, Factor and Solve Equations. Previous video, we learned that the principle of zero products is for any rational numbers a and b, if we multiply a and b and it equals zero, that's if and only if either a or b are zero. One of them has to be zero. And to solve equations using the principle of zero products, what we do is we get zero on one side of the equation using the addition property, then we factor the expression on the other side of the equation of the equal sign. Then we set each factor to equal zero, and we solve it, and we plug the solutions into the equation to see if it works to check it. So if we get two binomials that equal zero, we rewrite them so they each equal zero, and then we solve them separately. See? We set each factor to zero. If we have something like this, where it's x times 2x minus 9, we set the x to equal 0 and the 2x minus 9 to equal 0 and solve them separately. And if we have something like this, well, then we just have to factor the square of a binomial and then set it each to equal 0, and I'll show you. So we must set the polynomial to equal 0 first. So if we have x squared minus 8x equals negative 16, what we can do is use the properties of equality to subtract to, I'm sorry, to add 16 to each side to get that negative 16 out of there, we want a 0 in its place. So by adding 16 to each side, we create a 0 pair here and we eliminate that negative 16 and we throw a 16 onto this side. So now we've got x squared minus 8x plus 16 and it equals 0. So We've got the polynomial set to 0. Now we factor the square of a binomial. So when we see this x squared, the first thing we do is we make two sets of parentheses and we put an x in the beginning of each one, don't we? Now we need to find two numbers that the product is a positive 16 and their sum is a negative 8. So we can make a factoring table to help us. And we list all the products that would make a positive 16 but they have to make a sum of negative 8. And when we get to negative 4 times negative 4, which is a positive 16, and it, the sum is negative 8, we know we found the right one, and we just put them into the parentheses. See? Then we use the principle of zero products, and we do x minus 4 equals 0 and x minus 4 equals 0. Well, that's the same thing. So we could really just do one of them, couldn't we? In the addition property of equality, we create a zero pair, and can isolate the x to one side by adding 4 to each side of the equal sign. We get x equals 4. Now we check to see if 4 is a solution by plugging it into the equation. So here was our original equation. Everywhere there's an x, we're going to put a 4 in its place. Instead of x squared, we got 4 squared. That's 16. And we need to subtract 32. And it should equal negative 16. Well, 16 minus 32 is a negative 16. So yes. 4 is the only solution. See? It worked. So we have to make sure that we set the polynomial to equal 0 first if it doesn't already. Okay? And then in this case, when you see this x squared in this, you know you can make a factoring table to square a binomial, right? All right, let's take a look at this one. I've got x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0. So this polynomial is already set to equal 0, so we're okay. So we can factor the square of a binomial. We make a factoring table. We make a list of all the products of a positive 6, but we need a sum of a positive 5. So we make our list of the products of 6, and we come up with a 2 and a 3 equals 6, and the sum equals 5. So we have our parentheses. We saw the x squared, so we just made parentheses right away, two sets, and threw an x in the front of each one. And now we know that it's going to be a plus 2 and a plus 3. We set it to equal 0 and use the principle of zero products. Now we've got x plus 2 equals 0 and x plus 3 equals 0. To get the x by itself, we use addition property of equality to create zero pairs. And we take away 2x from this side and from the other side of the equal sign, and we get x equals minus 2, negative 2. We do the same thing over here. We take away a 3 from each side of the equal sign, and we cancel out that plus 3, don't we? And we get x equals negative 3. Now we check to see if negative 2 and negative 3 are solutions by plugging them into the equation. So 
everywhere there's an x, we put a negative 2, and let's see what we get. Negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4, and then 5 times negative 2 is a negative 10, and we have to add the 6. 4 take away 10, well, that gives us a negative 6, and negative 6 plus 6, that makes a 0 pair. It's 0, yes, so negative 2 works. How about negative 3? Negative 3 times negative 3 is a positive 9, and we have to take away 15, don't we? Because a plus 5 multiplied to a negative 3 makes a minus 15. Well, positive 9, take away 15, is going to give us a negative 6. And if we add 6, that makes a 0 pair, so yes, negative 3 works. So negative 2 and negative 3 are solutions. See? So remember, set the polynomial to equal 0 first and then solve binomial factors set to zero separately and solve them and make sure you check them because you want to make sure you did it correctly, okay? You don't want to just assume you did it correctly, all right? Our next video is number 6.8c. I'm going to talk about the root of the polynomial and if you want to get a link to the principle of zero products, which we did the previous video from this one, I talked about it a little bit more and explained it more on how to prove it, or links to factoring, if you're confused about the square of a binomial and factoring trinomials and trinomial squares, there'll be links in this video's description, okay? So, I hope this was helpful. I hope you're doing okay. It's a beautiful day outside right now, and I hope I'll see you next video. Bye!